Right, you are watching The Context. It's time for our new weekly segment, AI Decoded. Welcome to AI Decoded, that time of the week when we look in depth at some of the more interesting uh, stories from the world of artificial intelligence. This week, AI Decoded has been to Wimbledon, uh, where we caught up with their technology partner, IBM, to find out more about the integration of AI and data analytics at the tennis tournament. We'll discover how IBM's AI systems handle and process extensive data to enhance the public's experience of the tennis, as well as helping to assess player performance in real time. It's featured here in the drum. And later in the programme, we'll also be speaking to players and Wimbledon officials over how Grand Slam tennis tournament is now using artificial intelligence to protect players from online death threats and other online abuse as seen this week in the Telegraph newspaper. Well, with me is Priya Lakhani, our regular AI presenter, as well as CEO of AI education company Century Tech. Priya, great to see you. Good to so see you've been us. busy. Tell us, what, what have you been up to? So the article is about Wimbledon using AI to increase that sort of experience of the match and the game. Now, we know that fan engagement drives every single sport. If you have high fan engagement, you're going to have higher merchandise revenue, higher ticket sales, um, higher sponsor revenue. And so it's incredibly essential, actually, for sports that they drive that fan engagement. With artificial intelligence, it's now possible to personalise that engagement. And so if you think about it, so if you go on X, so I went on X earlier for us and I looked at sports leagues, they have their own following. So Wimbledon has four million followers, but it can be the case that a single player or you know, a few players could have a bigger following than the sports league itself. So if you mm. look at Twitter, if you look at X, uh, Djokovic has 9.2 million followers. So to be able to personalise that experience for fans, to make it about their favourite players or the country that they're in, so you can make it about you know, sponsoring or supporting your national team is really important. And it then drives that emotional connection from the fan, you know, from the fan to then be able to be more engaged in that experience. So I went along and I spoke to a lot of people to understand how they were using data, unstructured data and artificial intelligence to drive the experience. And it was an incredible, it was an incredible experience to hear what they were doing. OK, let's go and let's take a look now then at your day at Wimbledon. AI Decoded is at Wimbledon and I'm super excited. Look at all of the seats filling up at the back and people taking their places on the lawn and there's a huge queue outside Centre Court. The players are also warming up right behind me. But why are we here? Well, because right underneath my feet, underground, the Wimbledon team have teamed up with IBM Watson and they're leveraging artificial intelligence technology to provide us with ball-by-ball -ball feedback on their new app and also predictions about who's going to win. I'm not so sure the players are feeling happy about that. Let's go and take a look. So while Rebecca and Kalaskai are up on centre court battling it out, there's also a lot of action happening here in the AI bunker. Let's go and have a look. So Kevin, you're the IBM partnership executive for Wimbledon. Tell me about the ideation of this app and how you built it. So we've been working with Wimbledon since 1990 as their technology partner. We have a year-round process of innovation that um, we work together with the Wimbledon team to ideate, co-create, and it really starts with the, the different types of fans, what we call personas. So different fans consume content in different ways. We want to take that into consideration as we're designing the experience. And it starts on paper and pen. It's sketching out ideas. Um, and then we try some things out over the, over the summer and the autumn. We obviously have the championships during that period as well. And then reconvene in the autumn to decide which of those features um, bubble to the surface and that we want to implement for the following year's championships. Um, and which ones are kind of in the hopper for future consideration. So, so very much this, this 
process of co-creation, co collaboration, using something called the IBM Garage method. It's design thinking, it's agile, um, and, and you know, working together to bring the, the tournament to life through these fan engaging experiences. So how have you used artificial intelligence to enhance that user and fan experience? We've been using AI for a number of years now, and there's some experiences that we've rolled out over the last 10 years using AI. Um, for this year and last year, um, so building on some features from last year, we're using generative AI. So using IBM's Watson X, this is our enterprise AI and data platform. Um, that, within that, we have a number of foundation models, uh, an example of which is IBM Granite. This is a large language model. We're teaching it the language of tennis, the language of Wimbledon, um, and um, refining some of the nuances in language. For example, it's the ladies and gentlemen singles rather than the men's and women's for Wimbledon. Um, and uh, um, making sure that the inputs, the data is trusted, it's um, compli compliant to regulatory requirements. Um, and then the outputs of that trained model um, are, are used to create the catch mail feature, these short form narratives, short form stories that are about the players that you want to, to hear about through the tournament. I was quite excited about looking at the input data for this. So I was imagining a court where you'd have sensory data feeding a machine, but I was quite interested to see that actually you had a couple of people, a couple of IBM people who were you know, by most of the courts and they had a laptop and actually someone was feeding in and capturing the data from every shot. Um, so what's the human in the loop elements that you're using in terms of your technology? With all of this, it's a, it's a process of humans and AI working together. Um, so the data capture, there the are elements that are human that are interpreting the game, um, but there's also um, other data like the um, tracking of the players, tracking of the ball, um, you've seen the challenge system, so you would have seen the, you know, the, 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 the trajectory of the ball um, hitting the line or not hitting the line. Um, so very much a, a combination. Same with the training of the large, large language model. Um, that is a combination of AI and humans in the loop. Um, so you know, it, it, and and you know, the reason we're doing this is to create content that's complementing the human element. The Wimbledon editorial team, content team, are still writing the same stories about the, the top seeds, the top players, great matches that are coming up. There's a lot of other stories that are potentially unfolding across the tournament. So this is a stepping stone to be able to write stories and produce content to complement the human stories um, around perhaps the wheelchairs, the, the seniors, the under 14s, juniors, etc. So one of my favorite parts of the app, and I know that this isn't brand new, but is the prediction. Uh, who's going to win? And I was obviously very, very disappointed that the prediction for Raducanu didn't quite uh, play out on, on Sunday. Um, what do players think about that prediction and does the prediction feed the language model when you're creating those stories? Wimbledon are looking for opportunities to engage with fans ahead of matches, during the match and after the match. So with our new Catch Me Up feature, there is a short form story that's written in, in advance of a match that's weaving in things like the likelihood to win. Um, it's also signposting to additional content that you can find on the platforms, such as IBM Slam Tracker, which is the, where you can find all the stats for a match. And then post-match, those stories are updated as well. Something else we produce post-match is um, AI-generated highlights reels. So this is listening to the noise of the crowd, looking at the gestures of the players. We know where in the match the action's taking place. Is it a critical point? Is it a break point or a set point? And then we put an excitement level against each of the rallies. And those, the most exciting rallies, are then automatically curated into our two to three minute highlights reel that's given to the Wimbledon content team, who then make the final editorial decision about what gets published on Wimbledon.com. So, Kevin, as part of the unstructured data that feeds into your large language model, you talked about using sports journals, uh, articles. Is there an element of bias that could be fed into the model? Or are you quite careful as to how you curate that data? So we're careful about the news, the, the data sources that we're using. So an example of a, uh, one of the data sources we're using for this year's Catch Me Up feature is Sport Radar. Um, but as part of that training process of the models, we are making sure that the um, that it is looking for things like bias and making sure that, that that is addressed as part of that training process. And I suppose what make, is really, really important in this case is that human in the loop 
and you talk about it's the AI and you have people essentially QAing what goes into that data, is that correct? So the, there are processes and procedures in place to make sure that it is a combination, both through the training process and then as, as new content is being created, um, you know, things like fact checking, making sure that um, those are flagged and can be reviewed. Actually, one of the biggest challenges for us is getting that balance right between the brand of Wimbledon, the tradition, the heritage, the beauty, the, the drama of Wimbledon that you see every day, and technology and innovation. And so if we can get that balance right, you know, a lot of the, the technology that we've been talking about is, is hidden, it's under the covers. Uh, we wouldn't talk about tennis in an English garden and, and we want to make sure that in everything we do that that shines through. How very pleasant, what a nice day. Um, <laughs> fascinating on the tech. One little bit there that I did notice about that, the actual data going in mm -hmm. is still people tapping on yeah. keyboards, isn't it? Yeah, uh, what's yeah. The, and, and is that, the ambition for that part to be removed as well, or just talk me through that? So I think I, their specific amb ambition, I'm not sure, but what is obviously possible is to start collecting in the future sensory data. So you would have mm. sensors around the court. So we already have, for example, the speed of the ball, that's already input into this machine. But it was really interesting because when you peered over from the broadcast centre at Wimbledon, you could see these little boxes with these two humans and a laptop. <laughs> you know? And uh, I went to go and speak to them, actually, because I really wanted to understand what they were doing myself. And they said they had a list of options. And so I'm guessing it sort of said, you know, wide, out, you know, or whatever. And they were sat there tapping on those. Those then fed into the larger machine, the IBM machine. And then that then fed into the large language model that was then generating that personalised feedback. And so, and it, because it's still on, you know, you can go onto the Wimbledon website, onto the app, it's called Catch Me Up. It's available to everyone and you can start seeing that feedback. And then those predictions that are there is actually slightly different, but that then feeds into some of this personalised feedback as well. So I think at the moment it's pretty nascent, but you can start to see to your question how you could add more and more data to this to make it even more engaging. Fascinating. Priya, thank you so much for that. Right, we'll be back with Priya in just a moment. Coming up after the break, we'll be speaking to tennis pro and Wimbledon contender Joy DeGeo to get her thoughts on Wimbledon tackling online trolls using AI. And we'll also hear from All England Lawn Tennis Association, who originally devised the idea. All that in just a moment. Around the world, across the UK, this is BBC News. Welcome back to AI Decoded. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Wimbledon has decided it's time to take action against abusive messages being sent to players on social media. Players like Naomi Osaka, who, according to a 2021 study, found she was the most abused player that year, and former US Open champion Emma Raducanu, who has admitted deleting her social media uh, media apps due to trolls. Well, with me again is Priya. So, Priya, this is a slightly clearly more serious side to uh, what you've been investigating down at Wimbledon. What's the idea here? So, the idea is to ideally help protect players. It's mm. about safeguarding players. And so, Wimbledon's taken action. They're using the AI system Threat Matrix. Um, the French Open used Bodyguard AI, which is a similar sort of technology. And it's to be able to scan the social media posts that are essentially targeting players, identify which ones are abusive, and then if action needs to be taken, that will be reported to the authorities. And this is super important. So you talked about Yoma know, Osaka. 32,000 harmful messages in 2021. Djokovic, over 15,000. Serena Williams, over 18,000. Loughborough University were, did a report commissioned by the Olympics um, Committee, and they found that about a third of posts in terms of targeting these athletes now contain negative content. So this is a huge problem. And I know we have people like Rio Ferdinand talking about this when it comes to soccer and lots and lots of people, football, I should say. I don't know why I said soccer. I've got a <laughs> American there. Yeah, um, we're global, that's, yeah. fine. that's fine. But, but this is obviously an enormous problem in safeguarding athletes and ensuring that then it doesn't affect their performance. Because that's actually what happens. It gets into the minds, they feel fear, it affects their performance. It just has to be stopped. OK, well, let's take a look now at your report into the efforts to do just that. Let's take a look. So, Joy, Wimbledon's also using artificial intelligence technology to be able to scan the social media 
of a player to see if there are any trolls because mm -hmm. we've had players like Emma Raducanu and Harriet Dart say that when they lose they're often trolled on social media. Yeah. Do you feel more protected by Wimbledon being able to do this and then alert the police if there is any bad behaviour online? This, yeah, I think it's really good that they're doing it because I've heard it a lot of people that they get the messages and especially after they lost the match. And those people are just, yeah, it's just a bit rude and not good for the player. So I think it's really good that they are coming with it. They're using AI to predict which player is going to win. How do you feel about that? I think it's a really good system and I think it's great for the players and the people who watch here to see like who is going to win the match or on, based on the moment who's going to win the match. And I think it's really cool to see like point by point what's happening. So, yeah. Do you think that before you play your doubles match, which is coming up, are you yeah. going to be looking at the predictions on the AI app? I think I'm going to, yeah, <laughs> especially on the other matches. And yeah, I think it's really cool to see. And especially during the match, it's very nice. And I want to see it before my doubles match. So I'm yeah. going to look for sure. And if it's not showing quite what you'd like it to show, you can beat the odds, right? Yeah, I can. Always yeah. in a game of life sports. Of course. Yeah. All the best and good luck. <laughs> Thank you. So Chris, you're the digital products lead at the All England Club. And I was really interested that you're using AI not just in terms of the engagement of your audience and increasing that engagement, but you're also using AI to scan the social media feeds of players to be able to protect them from trolls. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a, a joint initiative that we launched with some of the other tennis governing bodies earlier this year. Um, you know, we all, we all know uh, about the potential negative impacts of social media. And it's another great example of where we're looking at the latest technology that's available and really thinking about where it can have a really positive impact. That could be for our players, that could be for our fans, that could be the people that are attending uh, here on site and getting very excited right now <laughs> over the tennis. Um, <laughs> but, you know, essentially uh, it's about finding that latest technology and finding where it can, can really add value uh, to Wimbledon as an experience. And have you had any player feedback in terms of that particular application of artificial intelligence? Yeah, so we've had really positive feedback um, that, that it's something that we're, that we're looking at and that we're, we're utilising. Um, I think, you know, the player experience is extremely important to us, making sure that they can focus on producing the fantastic moments uh, that, we're, that we're seeing right, right here, right now. Um, and, 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 you know, anything that we can do to improve that experience is extremely important. What is the digital strategy for Wimbledon? So, you know, obviously it's phenomenal for the people that are able to attend uh, here uh, at the All England Club during the, the championships. But really what we want to be doing is, is bringing the championships to people where they are, wherever they are in the world, whatever platform they're on, to make sure that they can experience that kind of really unique Wimbledon element of, 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 of this you know, phenomenal place uh, at home. Brilliant. And why AI? So you've teamed up with IBM Watson <laughs> and their yeah. machine learning team. Uh, you know, what was the sort of persona of the, the audience that you're trying to capture that made you think, right, we want more personalization? Yeah, so obviously Wimbledon uh, as an event is phenomenally successful and, and that means that we transcend a normal tennis audience. In, in some instances we transcend a sporting audience. So we've got people who are engaging with Wimbledon who don't engage with other sporting events throughout the year. What we can do utilising AI is, is, is make sure that we're really personalising that experience to, to the different people that we have engaging with us, that we can simplify things down and that we can make it relevant to them. And what's the future strategy? So what are you looking at? Are you looking at the metaverse? Yeah, absolutely. So well, we're already in the, the metaverse in a way. Uh, so we've got Wimble World, uh, which is our, our, our experience in Roblox, which has been phenomenally successful, uh, especially engaging a, a youth audience, which is particularly important for us. You don't have the same family moments that you used to with, you know, uh, parent and parents and kids gathered around a TV watching uh, traditional broadcasting quite the same way. So if we can spend time where young people are spending their time and, you know, engage them with tennis from a very early stage, then, you know, we're future proofing the brand, future proofing tennis and making sure that that generation can enjoy Wimbledon uh, for decades to come. Fascinating. Let's go back to that, that the idea of trying to tackle these trolls. How does it work? OK, so they have an AI-powered threat detection algorithm that scans the posts on social media. Then it removes bots 
And then any discriminatory abuse that's targeting a particular athlete is flagged on the system. That then goes to experts who analyse it. So I like that so you asked that because there's a human in the loop. That's loop. human. Human right, in the okay, loop, yeah. yeah. And then the ones that they then select are submitted, um, in, you know, for action. But what I would say to you, Lewis, is that you know, what we're seeing is that humans just simply cannot keep up with this avalanche of activity. So, and we're talking about human moderators here. We saw the news in X some time ago where Elon Musk fired a lot of their human moderators. And clearly something needs to be done here because I don't think this is going to solve the problem. Because firstly, people hide behind anonymous handles. So unless anonymity, I'm not saying you don't have anonymity online, but you should have to register with some form of ID so it can actually be traced to those rather pathetic individuals sitting behind their screens. And then the other issue is, you know, we need that sense of moderation in the first place because we don't, it can't be too late. You know, once that's out there, you can't, you know, stuff the stuff the cup, cat back in the bag, whatever whatever yeah. the expression <laughs> is, right? But but it's out there, it's out there. Indeed. Um, in a word, you were spent the day at Wimbledon. Did you get to see any tennis? Just when I peered over, <laughs> yeah, not, but I've been watching it. I've been really. watching Good. It on the screen. Good, and great Football stuff. on Sunday. Priya, thank you so Come much on for that. Thank Thanks you for watching. This is BBC News.